DC motor control. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to control a DC motor with the microbit and L298N motor driver board. Generally, we control two things of a DC motor, speed using PWM, we have an entire video of that, so go check that out, link is in the description, and direction using H-bridge driving reverse polarity. For the speed controlling, we use PWM, pulse width modulation. PWM is easy to set up with the microbit. In this example, we're going to control the width of the pulse with a variable resistor. The resistor connects to P0 of the microbit. For the directional controlling, we reverse the polarity of the motor using the H-bridge circuit as the picture is shown. The first picture on the left shows all switches off. So here we have four different switches, S1, S2, S3, and S4. The middle picture shows the switch 1 and 4 are on. They're connected and the motor spins in, the, in one direction. And the last picture on the right shows switch 2 and switch 3 are on, making the motor spin in another direction. In this example, I'm going to use button A to change the direction of the motor. Microbit doesn't have enough power to drive a DC motor directly, but fortunately, L298N Dual H Bridge Motor Driver Board has everything we need to drive a small DC motor. The board is the H-Bridge DC motor controller with two pins, input logic, like the picture shown in the previous slide. The picture shows the board layout and functionality. The board has two outputs, output A and output B, where you can connect the motors. IN1 and IN2 are input logic to control output A, whereas IN3 and IN4 are input logic to control output B. The plus 12 volts power and ground are the input power supply source for the board and motor. Here's the connection diagram for this project. R1 is a 10K ohm variable resistor and connects to P0 of the microbit to control the speed of the motor using PWM for the micro. The microbits P1 connects to I1, IN1, P2 of the microbit connects to N2, the output A connects to DC motor. Finally, a, a 9V battery connects to the 12V and ground. We reverse the logic control on P1 and P2 control direction of the DC motor. Let's see the code and the result. All right, I have went into microbit. I'm going to, I'm going to be creating a new project. I'm going to call it motor. And I'm going to hit create. Um, we're going to need both defaults and we're going to also need button A and a function. Let's start with a simple on start. So we're going to need to make a variable, just like always. We're going to call this one direction. Because this one will ch we'll change the direction from one to the other. So we're going to set direction to zero and then we need to create a function click number. I'm going to call this change direction. And for this we're going to need PWM. And we're going to call change direction with direction in it. Um, next we're going to do in the forever loop. This one's also pretty simple. All you have to do, grab a if else, and if direction is equal to zero,
then we're going to put in a analog right pin. We're going to set this to P1. And we're going to set it to analog read pin P0. Analog read pin P0. Else, we're going to do the exact same thing. You can duplicate it. And then switch P1 to P2. Next, we're going to grab an A button. This one will be activating the direction. On button A pressed. And here is pretty simple too. Grab a if else. I can just duplicate from here. If direction is zero, then it's going to set direction to one. Else, set direction to zero. And then you need to call the function change direction with again direction in. Okay, for the last part, we're going to be doing the function. I click this twice, or once. So we're going to grab a digital. Oh, I'm more used to this. So I'm going to go grab a digital right pin P10. There we go. And we're going to duplicate that and set that to P2. Then we want to pause it for 500 milliseconds. Here's why we have to pause. The motor will keep continuing spinning. However, if you decide to change direction all of a sudden, then it's going to have to, then it's going to have to change all of a sudden. If we take a pause, it'll have time for it to stop, but then start. So we're going to next grab a if else. If num is equal to zero. So if it equals to zero, then we're going to go grab a digital right pin. P2 to 0. And then we're going to grab a analog. We have an um, entire video about the uh, analog too. So you should also go check that one out. We're going to grab a analog right pin. We're going to change it to P1. Put it over here. And we're going to set it to analog read pin P0. Analog read pin P0. There you go. And for, then we're going to grab a analog set pin. Analog set pin. It's called analog set period pin. We're going to set this to P1 to 1000 microseconds. It looks like an upside down H with an S. And then for the else, we just duplicate everything, except to swap it from P2 to P1. And there you have it. All right, so now that we have the code done and the wiring done, we're going to test this out. So I'm gonna connect to the battery to this part here. So we have this little green tape to show you which way it's moving. So right now I set it to medium speed because it's medium over here. If I slowly push it, you'll slowly see that slowing down or speeding up. In this case, I'm slowing it down, as you notice. And I'll slowly speed it up.
Okay, so I'm going to press button A. We'll put this on the ground. If I press button A, it is reverse direction. I'll show you one more time. See? So, it works the same way as the last time. It slow down and speed up. So, now that we know it works, this is the end for this video. That's all for this video, guys. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that way you won't miss out videos like this.